tractor. Fuel tanker. <laughs> Hello my little pickles and welcome to episode 6 of the Knitting Pickle podcast. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome, hello. I hope you enjoy what you're about to watch. And if you are a returning viewer, of course, welcome back. I'm very grateful to have you. It's been a little while since I last recorded. Um, I usually put out a podcast every two weeks, or at least I aim to. But the last few weeks in my life have been pretty mental. I will do a little bit of live chat at the end of the video because obviously, Quite a few of you are probably here just for the knitting, so we'll save that for the end. A little bit about me, just in case you haven't seen my videos before. My name is Laura and I live in the Midlands in the UK. I am currently a full-time mum and I'm just starting to venture into knitting pattern design, which you'll hear a little bit more about later on. In this podcast, we are going to be covering mainly whips today, though there is one finished object car two finished objects, what I'm wearing and something that I'll talk about shortly after. So let's start, grab yourself a drink and your project if you're knitting along. I'm not on the coffee today because I've spent the morning running around preparing for my daughter's birthday, which is tomorrow. So I'm warm and it's muggy and coffee is not the one today. So I'm on the soft drinks. So let's start. First of all, of course, what I'm wearing. If you have seen the last episode, episode five, I talk about this in a lot more detail. So feel free to go back and watch that one if you've not seen that episode. But for those who have, I have finished my Seaborn tea. Ah! This is possibly one of my most favorite knits ever. It has barely left my body since I finished it. It is knit in drops, Bell, which is a cotton linen viscose mix and this was a test knit for the wonderful Hannah of Herb Garden Knitwear. Hannah has so many beautiful designs and I was lucky enough to get to test knit this one. The test knit is still live and I think there might still be a few test spots. I'll double check that with Hannah before I release this video. Um, but otherwise, I think the pattern is being released, I think it's by the end of July, but again, I'll double check that. But anyway, here it is. It is this beautiful, slightly cropped, loose, boxy cut t-shirt with this gorgeous lace detail along the sleeve and the bottom hem. I'll do a little cutaway of me wearing it so you can see it kind of properly standing up. But since I finished this, a couple two weeks ago now I think I have worn it at every opportunity possible two weekends ago me and my husband had our first night out together in nearly a year thanks to you know what and I was like I know exactly what I'm wearing and I, so I wore it on our little date night I wore it to soft play yesterday it's basically just just the, my fave garment at the moment for sure in the UK at the moment it's summer but it's not like scalding hot at the moment which is perfect for me I hate hot weather. I'm a winter autumn girl through and through. So when it's kind of warm but not too hot, I really like wearing this with jeans. And I'm also kind of looking for some, maybe some like navy, um, what's the word? Like chino, chino shorts to go with it so I can wear it on the warmer days. But that's the Seaborn tea. I hope you like it. And again, if you want more information, Go and have a little look at episode five. All my episodes have timestamps, so if you want to go and watch that specific bit, just have a look in the description and the timestamp will be there and it will say Seaborn Tea. So that's what I'm wearing today. On to my first finished object, which is kind of linked to this top because I used the scraps, well not the scraps, the kind of leftovers from that project. I used quite a lot less yarn than I thought I would, so I've had a decent amount of yarn left over, but not enough to really make a garment or anything. So last weekend, weekend before, weekend before last, me and my family went down to Devon for the weekend. That's where my in-laws live. And obviously we've not been down there for nearly a year. So we got to finally get, go down and visit them and go to the beach and everything. And it's about a three and a half hour drive away. So I was like, I want a new project that I can do in the car on the way down, that I can do whilst I'm there, that it doesn't take any thinking about. I can just kind of churn away out, but still kind of, get involved in conversation and everything. 
So I decided to make a washcloth. Now, if you haven't heard of the Pearl Soho half and half triangle shawl, where have you been? <laughs> I'm not a shawl knitter, but even I've heard of it. I saw on a new podcast actually, which I recommend you go and watch by the lovely Talia. Sorry Talia if I'm saying that wrong. Um, on her new podcast, which I will link below, she had made a half and half washcloth. I was like, ooh, that sounds a bit more me. I was really intrigued by the construction of the half and half triangle shawl. So when I saw there was a washcloth, I was like, well, there you go. I can give it a go without having to cast on a great big massive shawl. So here it is. And it's a little bigger than it was meant to be. <laughs> when I cast this on, I didn't look at the gauge. I didn't look at the yarn of the pattern. I was like, I've got this cotton left over. I like it on four millimeter needles. So I'm just gonna cast it on and see what I get. And maybe I should have done a little bit more research because this is definitely too big for my face. <laughs> so it's kind of not really got a use at the moment. Um, but I think it's probably going to end up being a hand towel in our new kitchen because it's just about the right size to quickly dry your hands after you kind of rinse your hands type thing. So this is again using the Drops Bell in the colour Dark Navy and Off White. I loved the construction of this to the point where I'm actually considering making the shawl version. You basically knit one triangle first, but you're doing short rows. This is a free pattern, so you just go and download it for free, and that means I can talk about it quite in depth as well. So you do one triangle where you're doing short rows at one end, and you kind of you start with the long end and it gets shorter and shorter as you go, and then you knit down all your short rows, change colour, change colour before you knit down the short rows, and do the other triangle which gets slightly bigger as you go. It's really hard to describe and if you're intrigued just download the pattern and give it a read and right at the end you do a little eye cord guy so you can hang it up and yeah I think the pattern's great. I really enjoy knitting it even if my finished product is a bit big. <laughs> so that's my first finished object and based on this when I realised this was too big I still had quite a lot of um, yarn left over. This, by the way, probably took me six to eight hours, I think, of my list knitting, though obviously the right size would probably be a lot quicker, though it would be the same amount of stitches, so maybe it would be the same amount of time. Anyway, based on this one, I cast on another one with my scraps. Um, so I can't remember how many stitches I cast on for this. This is like a DK weight yarn. I think it was about half, I think it was roughly 36 stitches I cast on for this. I did the white side first and then I did the little stripey side because I didn't have very much navy left and I carried my um, yarn as I went and I don't love the look of that. It probably would have been better to cut the yarn every time and then weaved in every single end but then you would have had quite a bulky edge and you know, it's a washcloth, who cares. So I've actually been using this one on my kids quite a lot. Um, we ran out of like kid sponges. I'm like, oh no, I forgot to get one. Hang on, I know, I've got an actual washcloth. And it seems to do the job. They don't seem to mind using it. It's, you know, it's a washcloth. What, what else is there to say, really? But yeah, if you want a quick, um, satisfying pattern that uses up cotton scraps, I recommend this for sure. And so based on these ones, on my way home from Devon, I had a, I had a thought in my mind about, hmm, I quite like to make a washcloth that is textured on one side and smooth on the other side. So you know when you have that kind of first face wash and you've still got a load of crap on your face from the day and you want to like slightly exfoliate and give it a good scrub, you need a bit of texture for that exfoliation. And then when all the uh, fly, uh, Oh, there are so many flies at the moment. We live right opposite Farmer's Field. I think I've said this before. And it's just like fly central. But anyway, so then when you have your like second cleanse almost, where you then kind of like just wash your face off again, it would be nice to have a nice smooth side of the washcloth. So on my way home from Devon, I did like a little miniature swatch of my idea. 
and this is how it turned out. It's ever so little, and this in itself would actually make quite a nice like eye makeup remover maybe, but not in white. That probably would be a bad idea. And my idea kind of worked out really. I made two, two separate squares and then put the right sides together and kind of did like a three needle bind off all the way around. Um, not quite a three needle bind off, but similar. I kind of like knit the two, knit through two stitches, knit through the next two stitches and then cast them off. So I was joining the sides and casting off at the same time. And when I got back to the final corner, I flipped it through. So the right sides were facing and did a little eye cord hook. And I really like it. Um, I've been using this one on the kids as well. And I would like to make a bigger version of this. And I have got some green cotton, um, which would match my green bathroom. So that's on the list of things to do. But since I got back from Devon, I've kind of been working a lot more on, on other things and kind of, I had the washcloth thing out of my system. So maybe I'll pick this up again. I would quite like to write this as a pattern. I'd probably um, do it as a free pattern, maybe with a video because it's just two squares sew together. <laughs> it's not difficult. So yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing this little washcloth pattern. And next time I do it, I'll write it up. Those are my only real finished objects. Though I do have two half finished projects. That's a thing, isn't it? Is it a, a half, they call it, half finished object? Not too sure. One of which you've seen before, you've seen quite a few times before, but I'm just gonna plug it one more time. <laughs> um, I've just been, I have nearly finished my final pair of corner set socks. This is my own design that I've been working on for quite a while. It's currently being test knit. Um, we're coming close to the end of the test knit now. So um, it's, it's getting close to being released. I'm quite terrified. I've done a yellow version, a green version, and this is a brown version. Um, this is to replace the yellow version for the pictures in the final pattern because the yellow version was kind of the first ones I ever knit and is slightly different to the final pattern. So I wanted a long version and a shorty version for pictures in the pattern. And this is probably one of my favorite color combinations, like a, a brown and a white. So I thought that's what I'd go for. These are knit using our Veta Classic by Phil Kalana. And again, in my previous podcasts, there's loads more about these socks in the process, but I just thought I would show you them for one final time. I've nearly finished the other one and I am making tutorials on how to do the toe and the heel. I have already filmed them, but I'm not 100% happy with them. So I'm gonna film them again when I next get an opportunity. But there was one other thing I needed to kind of address when it came to these. It has been brought to my attention by the lovely viewer who named these socks that I wasn't quite, wasn't quite pronouncing it correctly. So I call these the Cornicet socks because that's how I read the word. But if you're an actual Italian person who actually speaks Italian, you don't even have to be Italian to speak Italian, but if you speak Italian, you would know that it's actually pronounced Cornicette. You have to do the hand? No? Cornicette. Um, I'm not Italian and I have ummed and ahed for quite a while about what to do, whether to change the name, whether to use the correct pronunciation myself or whether to stick with the name that jumped out to me. I've, I've read the word as Cornicet and I loved it as Cornicet. I love alliteration. So when you say Cornicet socks, it gives me the vibes. It tickles my pickle. Um, so I decided in the end, to stick with my pronunciation because after chatting with um, the viewer that suggested it and then let me know that there was a little little problem there, I decided that in the end it's my pattern so I can call them whatever I want and pronounce it however I want. So if it really annoys you that I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologise because honestly when people pronounce things wrong it does my actual head in. <laughs> This is something me and my husband talk about quite a lot because he pronounces loads of things wrong and it really annoys me. So there you go. That's that elephant in the room. The corner set socks. Whilst we are on socks, I have another half finished pair. Well, they're not half finished. I haven't 
I've cast on the second pair, but it's just the cuff and there isn't really anything to see. The second sock. So I'll show you the first finished sock. And this is another design by myself. I first had a go at these a few weeks ago and I showed you just the little cuff and the leg that I'd done, but I wasn't happy with the placement of the pattern. So I ripped it back and started again the other day and I finished one. So I would love to introduce you to the Linton sock. The name for this one came to me straight away and I'll explain the name to you in a minute. But here you are, this is a large size sock. I've knit these for my husband initially. So this is a 72 stitch sock on 2.25 millimeters for the main bit and um, 2.5 millimeters for the color work. Because I mean, certainly for me and for most people, your color work gauge, even in stockinette, will be slightly tighter than your kind of regular stockinette gauge. So if I was to use the smaller needles for this color work, this part would be a little bit tighter than the rest. And this is the part that kind of gives the most trouble when it comes to getting socks on and off. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't too tight and it's worked really well. They don't look like different gauges, even though they are. So yeah, really, really pleased. This color work pattern was originally a sweater in my head um, and it might still be a sweater. I, I quite like the idea of doing it in DK maybe, but I thought, I might as well try it in socks when I couldn't think of what to do with this yarn. This yarn is the John Arben Exmoor sock. Um, and it, I've, this is the only sock I've actually knit in it. And I love it. It is rustic feeling. The, um, it's a mixture of Corridale and Blue Face Leicester, I'm pretty sure. And I think the Blue, Fla the Blue Face Leicester is super washed. But then you also have um, a small amount of nylon and a small amount of Zwartels, Zwartels, still struggling on that one, um, which gives it just this lovely, rustic, woolly feel. Um, if that's not your cup of tea, then you wouldn't have to use this yarn at all. The, um, the Arweta that I use, Arveta, every time the Arveta that I use for these socks is um, super wash merino and nylon and it's super super soft hard wearing and there's no reason why you couldn't use this kind of yarn for this kind of sock but i had these four colors in my stash and i didn't really know what to do with them and this just kind of this sock was just so inspired by the yarn itself that when it came to naming them i really wanted it to be something that was in reference to the yarn itself um, John Arben is a Devon based um, yarn producer, dyer. They make um, fibre tops. You can, I think they sell actual socks as well that they make using their yarn. And before COVID, they had a shop in Linton, which is a town in Devon where my in-laws used to live. It's actually a pair of towns called Linton and Linmouth. Linmouth is at the bottom of the cliff and Linton is at the top of the cliff. And in the cottage that my in-laws used to live in, when you looked out the very top window, you just saw this sea of rooftops and they were all different kind of zigzag shapes. And the offset zigzag of this sock really reminded me of those roofs. So I thought it was a really nice kind of reference to that place, which means so much to me and my family. I've got so many special memories there, so many special moments in me and my husband's relationship there. And, you know, it's where we go to get away from life, to spend time with family and to relax. So I wanted to honour that little village. And obviously, it's where the yarn comes from. So I thought it was perfect. So these are the Linton socks. I have written the pattern for these already. Turns out it is a lot easier, second time round, <laughs> to write a sock pattern. Um, the gauge is the same. The stitch count is slightly different because this is a six stitch repeat and the corner set socks are a four stitch repeat so there was a slight difference there but I have written the pattern I am knitting the second of these ones just to kind of double check that pattern and then they will be ready to be test knit um they have to be um tech edited first I am using my sister as my tech editor as she is a graphic designer she is a crafter and she's got the math skills um, it's not something she's done before, but it turns out she's really good at it. And she also offers like that kind of graphic design view when it comes to the actual design of the patterns itself. So super lucky to have her on my team. She's also helping me with the corner set socks. The pattern, by the way, for the corner set socks is due to be released kind of mid 
July. Um, it all depends on kind of when my, my branding and my logos are finished and everything. Also, when I um, get the nerve to release it, I'm absolutely terrified to actually release the pattern, which is ridiculous because, you know, I've had such, I've had such wonderful feedback about them. The test knitters have really enjoyed knitting them. So there's no reason why I shouldn't release it. <laughs> But obviously it's quite a big thing um ah, nervous anyway so those are my linton socks i think they are quite a unisex sock and if anything they slightly lean more towards the masculine which i really really like because i quite often find it difficult to find sock patterns that i want to knit for my husband or for my dad um and my husband really really likes these and i think they're so um what's the word, versatile when it comes to colour choice. Obviously I've used a block flat colour here, but I was thinking the other day, how nice would it be to use a speckled yarn, like a hand dyed speckle for the body, and then pick up the colours of those speckles in the zigzags, or maybe a white sock with like a rainbow zigzag. There's five zigzags there, so it would totally work. So yeah, I hope you like these socks. Let me know what you think, and or don't let me know what you think, because I'm too scared to know what people actually think. <laughs> let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, hopefully the test call for these will be in the next few weeks after the corner set sock test has finished because my God, it was a lot more work than I realised and I think I need to go about it a slightly different way this time because I found it a little bit difficult to kind of keep up with all the different test knitters and who was paired with which size and all that kind of thing. So I think I'm going to find a different way to do this next time. Anyway, moving on from socks. That's it for socks. No more socks. If socks aren't your thing, socks are done. Fluid break. Fluid break. That sounds gross. Next is on to full whips. I have three whips, all of which I've mentioned before, but one of which looks very different to the last time you saw it. So I'll leave that till the end. The first one is my Felix sweater. I have been working on this a reasonable amount since I last showed it and I had nearly finished the body the last time I showed it I hadn't quite yet split but I have now split and I think I've nearly finished the body I'm finding it really really difficult to know when to finish the body of this because I don't want it cropped but I also have got quite a tight yarn budget I've got plenty of this guy which is the hedgehog fibers um, skinny singles merino in the shade pollen but this guy is the hedgehog fibers um alpaca boot clay also in pollen i've only got 600 meters of this so i am cutting it fine i did check the meterage of the pattern and i should have enough but obviously you never fully know because your gauge everybody's gauge is slightly different this does meet gauge but I just don't know and I would really really like to have long sleeves for this because I much prefer long sleeves on a sweater but I don't know if I want a long length or long sleeves more I think I want long length more so what I think I'm going to do is just keep working it a little bit further and then do a nice thick rib on the bottom because I much prefer a thick rib and then take the remaining yarn that I've got split it into two balls and just knit the sleeve until it's done so I know how much I've got and then kind of make my best guess when it comes to the rib um because I would like a rib cuff but if I end up doing a three-quarter length cuff I might do an I-cord bind off um if and this is the other thing I can't decide if I do a three-quarter length I'd like it quite poofy and then an I-cord bind off if I did a long sleeve, I'd like it to be fitted, so i do decreases. So this guy hasn't been picked up for about a week now because I just can't decide what to do with the sleeves. What do you think? Maybe I should do a poll. Poofy three-quarter length or slim long ones? Because I reckon they probably take up the same amount of yarn. Let me know what you think. I'm in love with the fabric that this has created. The um, skinny singles itself, it's not variegated, I think it would be called tonal, and I'll do a close-up of the fabric that it's created, but that is just a really subtle colour variation. There's slight hints of darker mustard, hints of brightness, and I think it, you know, when, when the mohair and the singles come together, there is slight variation in the mohair. It's not mohair, 
Um, there is slight variation in the alpaca boot play as well, but not as obvious as in the merino single. And it, it's just, it's just lovely. I really, really like it. I'm looking forward to wearing this in the winter with dark jeans. I've got like a dark polka dot floaty skirt, which I like to wear in the autumn with a jumper tucked in. I think it would look really nice with that. Um, or maybe even in late summer thrown over a flowery dress. Not that I have any flowery dresses come to mind. Maybe I'll have to buy a flowery dress to go with it. But that is my Felix. There is more information about this one in my previous podcast. So feel free to have a look if you'd like to know more about the, um, the yoke and the lace and the short rows, which I had a little bit of an issue with. So feel free to have a look at that. The next whip is something that I showed in the last episode, but it was quite small at the time. And because I showed it in my last episode, I was suddenly inspired to start working on it again. And that is this little camisole. This is my own design and it's something I was working on. I cast on months and months and months ago, but stopped working on because I just wasn't really feeling it. And then I showed it in my last episode and then picked it up again. And as you can see, I have knit the body. I have split the the back and the front and I am now working on the booby shaping. I've done some decreases. This, by the way, is in Filcolana Mercy in off-white. And the reason I stopped is because I ran out, but I literally just had a delivery of more um, Mercy today. So I'm hoping to get back to work on this soon. Um, I've done some decreasing at the, at the armpit. So when I, I split, there's kind of like a bit of shaping there. And then over the kind of the top of the boob, I'm doing central decreases down the middle. This has been an absolute mind bleep. <laughs> the pattern itself, it's I guess it's technically lace because it's yarn overs and like knit two together, pull two together, this kind of thing. It's really, really simple, but I did not make life easy for myself on the decreases because I am kind of doing the decreases on the wrong side. I'm kind of doing the decreases on the back because I thought it would be easier, but I was definitely wrong. So this version of the cami is um, probably not going to be the final version of it. If I do write and release the pattern, I have no idea where to even start when it comes to grading garments. Grading socks, grading means making the garment bigger or smaller from the kind of size that you designed it at. Um, and so to make this um, bigger, I just I wouldn't even know where to start. So I think I'd probably have to find a really experienced um, tech editor to help me with that. So yeah, it's not been easy so far, but I'm enjoying the way it's looking. I can't really show it on you at the moment because there isn't any, any way to show it on my body, but you can kind of tell that the triangles would come here. So you end up with like a, a, a two Vs that come up over your little boobs. And there's gonna be, I think, double knit straps rather than I-cord though I'm not happy with the edging that's been left. I just kind of cast off in pattern and it looks, looks a little handmade to me. So I'm thinking of picking up the stitches along here and either doing like an I cord along the edge just to make it look a little bit more professional or maybe even doing a double knit band. And I know how I want it to look in my head, but I don't yet know how to actually do it. And I'm struggling to find a tutorial for the technique I've got in my mind on YouTube, but I have seen some patterns that do it. So I may have to buy a pattern, learn the technique from that garment and then apply it to my own. But another thing that's lovely about this cami is that it is technically reversible. I had this this way around in my mind. So it's mainly pearls with these kind of rib stripes, but the other way around is also super lovely and it's the knit side. Um, it would technically be easier to knit this on the knit side because there'd be mainly knits and just a few pearls. Um, so that's probably something to keep in mind when I do the next version, if I do a next version, because it's, it's quite a lengthy knit. It's taken me quite a while to get to this point and the body is shorter than I'd like, but I'd got quite sick of the body. So I was like, I'm just gonna move on. I can wear it with high-waisted shorts. <laughs> um, so yeah, it will be reversible, hopefully. It hasn't got a name yet. 
I've got some ideas, but I haven't fully decided yet. And I think the name will come to me when the garment is finished. So that's my last little self, self, blah, 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 self draft camisole, if you can tell. <laughs> the final whip I have to show you today is something that used to be something else. And I, don't, I, I feel like I feel bad that I ripped it out, which is ridiculous because it's my knitting. But you may, if you've watched my episodes before, I spent quite a lot of time talking to you guys about shawls and why you guys knit shawls and why should I knit a shawl. And I got really excited about knitting a shawl and then I cast on the shawl and didn't really like the shawl. <laughs> I originally cast on the uh, Life is Cozy Stormy Sky Shawl. This is all that is remaining. It was a little bit longer, but this is all that's remaining. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the pattern whatsoever. It's a really well written pattern. I really like the look of the, the pattern and the, the example in the pattern. And when I've kind of looked at the hashtag, there are so many beautiful versions of it out there. But my yarn choice just was not working. It is the John Arben Alpaca Supreme Heavy Lace. There's a heavy fingering as well, I think. And this was a yarn that had just been released when I decided that I wanted to knit short and I got super excited about it. And it, it's stunning yarn, which is why I'm reusing it because I just knew I wasn't feeling the shawl and I felt like this is gonna be a waste of this yarn because I know I'm not gonna wear this shawl. So it's nothing to do with the pattern, nothing to do with yarn, just the combination wasn't right. This alpaca, it's an alpaca, merino and mulberry silk mix, and it is divine. It's, there's a reason it's called alpaca, super, alpaca Supreme, because it is supreme. It is the softest, most luxurious yarn I have ever knit with. And the further I got in the shawl, the more I thought, I don't want this to like drape over on top of the fabrics on my shawl or around maybe around my neck it would be on my skin but I just like the more I felt this beautiful yarn the more I thought I want this against my body I actually want this on my skin because it just feels so so beautiful so I looked at the meterage I had and I think I've got about I think it's about 600 meters I've got and I mentioned before when I was umming and ahhing about this that I'd quite like to make a crop top or a bralette, one of the Jessie made patterns. I've made the My Secret Little Crop before, but it was in an Aran weight and it was really chunky and heavy and it wasn't a top that I felt confident wearing like out and about, but it was also too heavy to wear under things. So I've decided to go back and remake one of those because I love the design itself. It, the neckline, it kind of comes up quite high and it like decreases to a flat point and I find that's really flattering on me and kind of like my, my shoulders. It, I always like how I look in that shape top. So I have um, cast on and I've made a decent amount of, um, whoo, fly. I've made a decent amount of progress on the body and I am holding this double because it's definitely too fine to hold single for this. And I'm so glad I made this decision. I'm so glad I ripped the shawl back because I am absolutely loving this project so far. I already knew I liked the pattern and it's such a pleasure to knit. It's right in that between mindless and thinking about it kind of phase. The, um, I can't, I don't, I can't remember if this pattern is free or not. It was originally free because um, Jessie quite often does like mystery knit alongs where you download the pattern for free, but you, you don't know what the finished garment look like looks like. And I think they're untested as well. So it's like a complete mystery. And that is like really, really fun and exciting. So I downloaded it at that time, but I didn't take part in the knit along, I don't think. So I got the pattern for free. I think it might be paid for now, but even if it's paid for, go for it they're such versatile patterns the size range is massive it's huge the, the sizing is just excellent on jesse may designs and you can also use so many different yarn weights for it um, it gives guidance for fingering or dk or aaron and as long as you get gauge you're off 
Um, so I've done the, it starts with a little bit of one by one rib at the bottom and then you move into a three by three rib, which is why it kind of hits that nice mindless point because you kind of have to watch what you're doing because it's like knit three, pearl three. But once you get into the rhythm, you can just smush it out, go round and round and round and round. So I think I've got about seven or eight inches of this to, to do in total. And I think about two or three. Um, and I'll insert a picture of um, the an actual finished version of this so you can kind of see what it looks like. This doesn't really give you much of a clue. But I'm hoping that this will be something I can wear kind of under like white shirts. I wear white shirts quite a lot in the summer because they're like light and floaty. Um, but if I'm if if it's a day where I want to cover up, I can. Um, and then having like something like this underneath is kind of like a bra slash crop would just feel so lovely and it would like peep through if I've got the shirt kind of unbuttoned. It's not something that I would really wear on its own with jeans. Um, maybe I will one day, I don't know, but that's just not really my style at the moment. But also it would make a really lovely layering piece in the winter when it gets really cold. Imagine that, a lovely warm woolly crop top and then a lovely warm woolly jumper. It would just be like layer upon layer of woolly goodness. Why wouldn't you? So that is my final whip. I feel like this is gonna be quite a short episode. Maybe it's because I haven't really got anything new to talk about. Though it's probably one of those times where I feel like I've been talking for 10 minutes but it's actually been like 40. <laughs> so there you go, that's all my projects at the moment. I don't have any acquisitions this week. I, in the past kind of previous two or three months, I've bought quite a lot of yarn, more than I normally would. And that's prob probably, to do, <laughs> is probably linked with starting a podcast. But I just haven't really felt the need or the urge to buy any yarn, apart from the odd thing here and there. Like I bought a bit more Mercy for the, the cami and I've bought the odd um, sock yarn here or there, but just things I already had, but need a little bit more of. Um, so there aren't really any acquisitions this week, um, which is fine. So I guess we will move on to some live chat slash nitty chat. If you're not into the chatty sections, thank you so much for watching to this point. I really hope you enjoyed um, and I'll hopefully see you next time. But if you're here for some chat, let's get on with it. Usually at this point, I will let you guys know what has been tickling my knitting pickle over the past few weeks. And honestly, nothing's really stood out to me. It's been a, it's been a strange few weeks. I've definitely been kind of in a bit of a, a low mood, I'd probably say. I've been a little bit under the weather. My daughter was poorly a few weeks ago. I've not really been getting a lot of sleep. So generally things have been kind of just, if that's your baseline, they've been a little bit under. And I think it's important to talk about those times and acknowledge those times. I'm a big advocate for mental health and I kind of speak about it as and when and my experience of it all. But over the past few weeks, I've definitely been feeling a little bit low. Our house renovation is, it's not quite done, but we're on those final last two fiddly jobs, last few fiddly jobs. But for the past three weeks, we've been having our floors done and it is super, super invasive. I've basically had to be out of the house all day, every day for the past three weeks. And with two kids, um, that gets quite difficult after a while. There's only so many times you can go to the park. There's only so many times you can go to the big shop. I'm really fortunate that we were able to go and stay at my mum's house. But again, what that means in reality is get up in the morning, get everybody packed, get lunches made for everybody. And then when you get home again, you unpack everything, wash everything up, blah, blah, blah. It's just a lot. And it definitely affected my mood, not being able to be in my own home when I want. <laughs> um, I'm a massive, massive introvert. And because of the last year or so, all us fellow introverts finally feel like we can be introverts and uh, loud and proud. I'm sorry, but I'd much rather stay at home on my sofa with my family, doing the things that make me happy than going out and socialising when I don't want to. <laughs> so not being able to do that has been really, really hard. But I, f I feel like that mood has lifted in the past few days. 
Um, I finally felt like I've had enough energy and I felt well enough to go out for runs again. Hay fever hit me hard this year and because we live in the countryside, the walks and the runs that I can go of, it's just like grass everywhere, pollen everywhere. So that hasn't helped <laughs> either. But in the past couple of days, I've been able to get out a little bit more and that's had a huge kind of effect on my my mental health. And whilst we're on that uh, note, um, I would like to direct your attention to um, the lovely Tom from Knit Slips. I will put his Instagram and his YouTube down in my down in the description box. Um, Tom was one of my first kind of people that I started following and that followed me when I first started my knitting Instagram. He's super local to me. He's over in Coventry and he is a knitter, a crafter, a barista, a chef. He's just one of these super creative people and his content is wonderful. And he has, he does a podcast where he interviews other crafty people and he is planning on doing a series all about crafting and mental health. He asked me if I'd like to be involved and I was like, hell yes, because it's something that's super, super important to me. He, I think, is still looking for people to um, be involved in his little project. So if um, crafting and mental health is something that is passionate, that is something you're passionate about, and if your craft has had an effect on your mental health and you would like to share your story, then please head over to Tom's uh, socials and find out how you can get involved. Um, I'm hoping to film my contribution this weekend, but my filming opportunities are quite um, rare at the moment. Having the two kids, and having builders in the house in the house most days. I normally um, record at the weekends. Today is uh, Wednesday. It, as I said, it's my daughter's birthday tomorrow. So this weekend is gonna be full of uh, family and parties and everything like that. So I won't be filming this weekend. So hopefully I'll be able to do that soon and go and check out Tom's content. Whilst we're on the, con whilst we're on the subject of podcasts and other content creators, it's been day, been Laurie. Where was I? Podcasts. Yes, I've got a few podcasts to recommend to you guys this week. The first is Fernanda. Oh, Jesus. Tractor. You were right in there, darling. Sorry, I'm in London. <laughs> Honestly, we've got bin lorries, we've got annoying husbands. How is a girl supposed to make a podcast these days? Anyway, where was I? Podcast recommendations. The first podcast I would like to let you guys know about today is um, Fernanda from the Little Monkeys and Me podcast. She's just released episode seven. She is a lovely human being. She's got mad skills, beautiful taste. She's just finished a colorwork cardigan. I think it's Maya cardigan or Magic cardigan. I'm not sure, but it's a free pattern. I'll link it below. Um, and it, it just looks incredible. I've, I've wanted to do a colourwork cardigan for quite a while and it's really inspired me to cast one on and I think I'm going to do that pattern as well. I didn't realise it was free until I saw her podcast. So go and check out Fernanda, she's awesome. And the next podcast I wanted to recommend was This Nanny Knits, Lucy from This Nanny Knits. Lucy is a nanny, as the name might suggest, um, and in her spare time she knits. I think she's just released episode three. Um, she makes some really beautiful, colourful knits. She uses a lot of hand-dyed yarn. That's not something that I work with much, purely because I haven't got the patience to do all the different, like, swapping of the strands. But I still think they're just so gorgeous. So I really enjoy watching her podcast so I can kind of get that hand-dyed yarn fix and maybe the motivation to give it another go after the love note saga <laughs> so anyway go and check out lucy from this nanny knits the last thing i would like to talk to you about today and would like to um hear from you about is the subject of designers and knitwear designers um hannah from her garden knitwear who designed this stunning t-shirt, um, was talking on her Instagram the other day, quite candidly, about um, 
how much money she makes, how many patterns she sells. And I was really quite surprised. And it's really made me think about the patterns that I buy and the patterns that we see all the time. And I think especially on Instagram, you end up seeing a lot of the same things repeatedly. Now, this is nothing against the big designers who, you know, are the ones that you hear a lot of. So like Petite Knit or My Favourite Things Knitwear, they are as successful as they are because they are so talented and put in so much hard work. Um, so as not to detract from that, but because of social media and how that works, we quite, I quite often find myself seeing the same things over and over again. And as someone who's about to kind of enter that world and would like to enter that world and see if I can make some kind of living from it, um, it made me quite sad to really kind of see the reality of, of how hard it is to be a knitwear designer. Um, and it's a shame because there are so many small designers out there that have such incredible, beautiful designs. Having test knit one of Hannah's designs, the amount of work that goes into it is just incredible. So it's quite common that people in podcasts recommend other podcasters. I would like to start sharing um, designers whose work might not have the exposure that some of the other bigger designers have because without the hard work of these designers, we wouldn't be able to knit things. You know, designing isn't for everyone. I imagine there's more knitters than there are designers out there. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, help in the tiny, small way that I can. So obviously the first designer I'm gonna talk about is Herb Garden Knitwear. And I um, am going to insert some of her other designs here. There is a striped color work jumper. I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I have zero idea how it's pronounced. I'm sure someone will tell me. But it's based on Egyptian um, kind of collars and that kind of thing and it's like in the round stripes but then it's like flat stripes and the moment I saw it I thought oh Christmas I want to do that for Christmas so the I think the original design is in shades of blue but I'd really like to do it in red and white stripes I found the yarn I want to buy for it but I kind of at the moment I've realized that I only like to kind of have one big garment on my needles at the time. If I have more than one, I start to feel a little bit stressed out. So I'm like a couple of socks on the go, a couple of random things and a garment. So when my Felix is off the needles, I would quite like to have a go at that jumper. So hopefully I'll get to cast that on soon. So I would really appreciate it if in the comments below, you guys would let me know your favorite small designers. So I'm talking designers that maybe only have a few designs out, um, that um, you know haven't got you know hundreds and thousands of projects on Ravelry, um, so that we can all kind of start inspiring each other, and so that we can give these small designers a little bit more exposure. I know, I've you know I, I've got a relatively small following, so I don't know what impact I could have, but if I can make a small impact, then I would like to do that. So please let me know below so that in the next coming episodes, I can not only recommend podcasters for you, but I can recommend designers too. As always, let me know what's been tickling your knitting pickle this week. Um, hopefully next time I will have something that's really, you know, lit my fire when it comes to knitting. Maybe it'll be a colour work jumper, who knows? <laughs> but as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping that by the next episode, the corner set of socks will be ready to be released. And along with that release, I'm gonna do a giveaway as well. So hopefully next episode that will be in place. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.